Hello, in this video I'm going to make a clay figure based on this fantasy war priestess character design. I started by making an armature from aluminium wire and a wooden block. Once I had the size right, I wrapped the whole thing in aluminium foil to save on clay, posed it correctly, checked the scale against the drawing and another figure, and started slapping some clay onto it. Even though the finished figure is going to be covered in armor and all sorts of stuff, I find it easier to, to start by making a sort of anatomically correct uh, base to work from. Also, it's, uh, it's good sculpting practice. As you see, the figure is a bit wobbly at this point in time. I could probably have uh, doubled uh, the amount of wire I used, but once it's been in the oven once and we saved our progress, it's now hard and much easier to work with. We'll start by adding the sabatons, the piece of the armor that goes on the knight's feet. These are ridiculously exaggerated and oversized, but I do find that when it comes to character design, making details exaggerated, oversized and excessive is a great way to make up for lack of skill. The clay I'm using here is Fimo polymer clay, I don't know how it stacks up to other polymer clays, but even thin pieces like these uh, sabatons were pretty durable even without any armature. Now it's time to roll out some north of the border trademarked wormedilis, flatten them and cut out the first armor panels. These will go on the hips of the war pieces. I think the thinner you can make the armor panels, the better and more realistic they will look. But this thickness, 1 to 2 millimeters, is where I found it easiest to work with while still looking okay. Making the armor panels for the thighs was a question of trial and error. Cutting a shape out, putting it on the leg, seeing how it looks, cut some off, taking it off, cut off some more, and so on. Until eventually I got a shape I was happy with. Working like this, building the sculpture in layer is probably not the correct way to go about it, but for a noob like me it's, uh, it's an intuitive and easy way to do it. Before curing it I added some battle damage. While in the oven for the second time I added these wooden supports to get the angle of the sabotons right. It worked great! Here I am bulking out the thickness of the thigh armor plate to get the curvature correct. You should definitely do the grooves in the armor panels after attaching them to the figure. At first I thought I would have to use an armature in the long spikes on the knees of the lower leg armor, but actually it turned out uh, alright without any. For the ankles of the armor plates, I really wanted to slim down the armor so I could keep some of those uh, sort of anatomically correct proportions. After upgrading my workspace and popping the figure in the oven a third time to make sure I didn't accidentally smash uh, uh, the armor of the right leg, I repeated the same procedure on the left leg. I tried to keep all the panel lines straight and crisp, but of course I accidentally smeared them all while working on some other detail. I used a piece of armature wire to imitate rivets on these uh, armor panel straps. Making the pocket that goes on the thigh armor was an absolute joy, uh, super simple and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. At first I attached the pocket with, with these super wimpy straps, don't worry, those will have to go, they look like uh, bad. This is what I'm talking about, that's a nice strap, alright? This is such a nice and simple design for a strap. Uh, those small metal pieces are just aluminium wire by the way, and also I did eventually put some small balls of clay into these holes to imitate rivets. Badass knights do not skip leg days, so I went back and added some more meat to the lower leg before continuing with the left leg's armor. Now it's time for another wormidili and I'm really starting to see why these are so popular. Nice.
The figure has this piece of chainmail hanging between her legs and I did buy this uh, texture plate to get the correct texture but I didn't think it really worked for this scale with how thick the clay was so after cutting the, the shape I wanted I did go over it with an actual chain instead to try to get a more scale appropriate effect and you may say man that looks like bad but uh, Ah, I think it was alright, especially once I added these holes with the sculpting tool, uh, made a huge difference. And even if you hate it, it's mostly covered up by this piece of uh, fabric anyway. Uh, for which I used an actual piece of fabric to get the correct texture. This I was really happy with. I made it too short though, so I had to make another one. And time for some more pouches. I really like these, even though they probably would be super uh, dumb and impractical. Especially down at your ankles, I'm getting some real Crocs by Beams vibes from my own design. But they do look really, really cool. I had to go back and add a lot of the details I ruined while putting the pieces onto the figure. I tried to make some folds and creases in the fabric to make it look more natural and, and flowy. Finally I can start making the first pieces of the breastplate. Before I get to add material to the torso, I have to trim down the base a bit using a regular hobby knife. I also go back and add some thickness to the bottom of the breastplate, forming a crease down the middle of it. This looks great and helps sell the effect of it being made from real metal. Belts on breastplates look super cool. Of course we have to add one of those. The buckle is made from aluminium wire, similarly to how the strap buckles were constructed. Moving north across the torso, we reach the neck, where we'll add a gorget to the front and back. I managed to make this sweet cross with the ballpoint sculpting tool. Now it's time to work on the arms. They can't be attached to the armature the way I originally intended. But harnessing the power of power tools, we can drill some holes in the armpits and make new attachment points. Then it's just a matter of getting them in the correct pose. Here I have innovated on the original Wormadili by making it triangular. We're just gonna stitch these to the upper arm. And with that we got a skin starfruit. Let's add a few more triangles. A skin walnut, much better. These are supposed to invoke the look of the Landsknecht uh, uniform slashed sleeves. I hope that will come across clear once it's painted, but before that we have to make the van braces. And what's possibly the coolest piece of armor? The pauldron. I put in some small balls of clay under the pauldron to help it keep its shape on top of the wibbly wobbly sleeve. And here's a nice kind of gothic arc for strength and awesome looks. For the sword I made this pretty bulky armature and added a thin layer of clay. Now that I know how to make an arm, making a second one was really quick. Alright alright alright, I changed my mind. The real best part of an armor is of course the gauntlets. And you might say, doesn't gauntlets have hands and sculpting hands is a horrible nightmare? And you're correct. Gauntlets have hands, but it's not its not sculpting the hands that's the nightmare, it's, it's looking at the horrible mess afterwards, but uh, more on that later. And while the main figure is taking a 30 minute break in the oven, we're whipping together a torch handle, adding some wood texture and making some spikes, those will come in handy later.
And as we're already focusing on accessories and details, let's add some more metals. Back to the torch, I added seven of the pre-baked spikes to this little pancake. Adding seven uh, aluminium rods for the head of the torch and another pancake a little bit bigger than the one we made before. And a little bit of prodding with the sculpting tool and I think we have an absolutely awesome looking torch head. A hot tip for my fellow sculpting noobs out there, sculpting the hand holding an object was much easier than sculpting just the hand on its own. I think this one turned out pretty great. I actually ended up being able to remove the right arm so that's gonna be great for painting later on. Now it's time to make the forbidden lollipop, the head of the figure. Following these various steps I slowly approached something vaguely face-like. A ball bearing for the eye was a really nice trick. I really didn't like this, so I made another one. This one looks slightly better and absolutely evil. I also made the secondary sword and the sheet on the pauldron. Now our cackling bald witch head is back from the oven and it's time to give her a haircut. With the head firmly mounted in place, it's time to add a final piece of armor. This piece is called the beaver, which is a logical name that makes perfect sense. The war priestess also has a seven pointed headpiece or crown. Uh, the same seven spikes can be seen in the medallion that hangs on her waist. I attached that to the breastplate by drilling small holes into it, filling them with uncured clay and just sticking the chain into it. This forms a really nice attachment once it's been cured in the oven. I also made a handle for the pauldron knife. The head is looking a little bit too big, but that's an easy fix with a pinch maneuver. Oh, whoops, too far. That's perfect. The sword I made earlier got slimmed down using a hobby knife and I made an attachment point where I can glue it on later. An evil looking smile is far from enough to place you firmly on the evil part of the alignment chart, but standing on a disembodied torso should clear things up. A quick game of operation, later we have a mounting point for the armature wire and we can go ahead and mount the figure on its round base. With that we can go ahead and attach the final piece of clay, the left hand holding the sword. I just cut out the rectangle, cut some fingers from it, wrapped it around the sword and used a sculpting tool and my fingers to pinch the knuckles of the hand. Then a few flat wormy dealies to bulk up the gauntlet and we can attach the hand. Looking good. I just need to use CA glue to lock these wiggly chains into place and it's time for a senatal highlight. Okay, that's enough of that. With the priming out of the way, we can go ahead and base coat all the armor pieces with a shining silver. My hope is that the shine of the metal paint will come through a little bit even after we cover it with the primary color, which is dragon red. But first we're gonna go ahead and take that missing eyeball from the priestess and pop it in the paint bottle. This is to help with mixing the paint when you shake it. Here I am using the pro technique of just slapping the paint on. I had to use two coats of every paint to get an even coverage. For the trim and details I'm using weapon bronze. I 
a pure white would probably look way too clean, so my color of choice for the clothing is Vallejo's Pale Sand. And the king of color matte black for the alternating stripes. And with both the crotch flap and the medallion painted, I can finally glue the medallion down permanently. Oak brown goes on all the leather and wood details. A refreshing deep blue for some of the metals, the sword and knife sheet. I mixed oak brown and pale sand to get the skin color I liked. We'll use an alternate shade of white for the hair. And with that I think it's time for me to go behind the curtains and take care of the final details. And when I come back we'll have a look at the finished piece.